knowledge. But let me also go back to uh, uh, Gareth Edwards. Gareth, I understand that you have MMC Kenukunene with you. Yeah, absolutely right. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, MMC uh, for transport in Johannesburg, of course, Kenny Kunene. But I suppose, apart from talking about the infrastructure and issues in the uh, CBD itself, MMC, of course, you were the acting mayor uh, for a short-lived time as well. And these are the kind of things that you would have seen firsthand, yet nothing was done. Surely you brought this up. I imagine you would have. You were very vocal about it. Why did we get nothing done? Um, thank you for having me. You would remember that uh, when I was the acting mayor, uh, I did visit a few buildings, including Randbeck and uh, Beria. And this is what you find in the buildings. Uh, dumping inside the buildings, you find unsafe, unhealthy uh, uh, atmosphere, circumstances. You find um, children running around uh, in these dumping sites. Uh, illegal connection of water and electricity and uh, you find that people are paying and they tell you who they are paying rental to mm. um, you find these Zimbabweans there's a very powerful Zimbabwean who owns buildings here uh, Nigerians uh, Congolese but there's also uh, a Greek gentleman who also owns buildings you've got a Jew guy who owns buildings you've got Indians you've got Africaners so you've got South Africans and uh, foreigners who are owning these uh, hijacked buildings and people pay rent to them, they connect uh, illegally water and electricity, affecting uh, the adjacent buildings because uh, then the people pay higher uh, 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 municipal rates uh, for water and electricity. So, um, and I raised this issue. Unfortunately, uh, I was attacked. Uh, not by yourself, but other media houses attacked me. They called for me to be arrested. Uh, um, I have no Ubuntu. I want to evict people. Um, there's um, NGOs that threatened to take me to court. But the people living in the buildings were telling me that some of these NGOs are actually paid on a, on a, on a retainer by uh, hijack syndicates. The syndicates that hijack buildings, they pay these NGOs a retainer so that whenever government reacts and wants to evict, then they must take government to court on an urgent basis to prevent the eviction on the basis that there's no alternative accommodation or whatever reason may be. How do we try and stop this from happening again? It's clearly too late, MMC, for 73, I'm hearing 74 people now, unless I've missed an update. Apologies, but the last number I had was 73 people having lost their lives. How do we stop this? Because I'm just looking around this area, this building next to it, that also looks like it's bordering. The building opposite this one, not the yellow windows, the one behind, also looks a little sketchy. It feels like this is a ticking time bomb. Who needs to do what today to stop this happening again? Um, there's, there's, there's a multiple of solutions, and I'll give them to you as raw as they are. The first one is to amend the property law. The houses in Terfontaine in Roosevelt, people went on holiday for a week. When they come back, illegal foreigners are staying in their houses. When they try to take them out, they call the police. Police say, no, you have to find an alternative position. Uh, uh, accommodation for these people, otherwise go to court for an eviction order. Eviction order comes back and it says, no, 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 you have to find an alternative uh, uh, accommodation for this person before you evict them. So people must spend money to take criminals out of their buildings and their houses. They are no longer just hijacking buildings, they are hijacking houses. It was here in the city, it went, it spread to Hillbro, Perea, Uville, Orange Grove, Rosettenville. Now it's in Randbeck. When I was the acting mayor, I went to run back. I was called by uh, South Africans to run back to say we are being harassed here by illegal foreigners, by Nigerians who demand that we pay rent for them. So is there, is there going to be buildings in Randburg that could have the same issue as this? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, I want to see them. Mm. Uh, the same principle, dumping inside the buildings, uh, illegal connections, same principle. It's not just here. So. Today it's happening here and Randbeck and Terfontaine. Tomorrow it is going to Santin, to Houghton, in Soweto, 
they are making people sign, these foreigners are making people sign uh, documents pretending that they owe municipality rates. And then only to find that it's a transfer of property. There's houses that are now being owned by foreigners, illegal foreigners, in Soweto. So they're in the townships. They are done with the city. The solution is to amend this property law and make sure that if somebody is staying in your building, they must produce evidence that you put them there, if you've got the title deed. If you have the title deed, you say, I did not put these people here, they must go. Finish and clear. Number two, it is the... It is the mass deportation of all these illegal immigrants that are in the city of Johannesburg that have hijacked buildings. We must arrest them, hand them over to Home Affairs and let them be mass deported. You cannot run a city or a country for that matter. The Minister of Home Affairs said that there are 15 million illegal immigrants. He uses an, a nice word, undocumented. It's illegal. 15 million, according to Home Affairs. That does not take to account those who have, crossed, who have crossed the river on the back of crocodiles, which might be another 15 million or 10 million. So one would then say we have over 20 million illegal immigrants in this country. You can't run a country like that. You cannot take this country to the level of Singapore, to the level of UAE, to the level of China and other countries. We, we want to be well. careful though, M, uh, MMC as well, though, that we, we don't start building, we, we don't quite know what the cause of this fire was. I think yes. many people do agree with you, many people don't. You know that. We want to be careful not to attribute this though to uh, an illegal foreigner. We don't even know what happened yet. I think let's just be careful with the rhetoric. South Africans, in a sense, when you look at South Africans, those who are part of the hijack syndicates are brought in because they are criminals themselves. But this thing of hijack buildings have been started by foreign syndicates who are hide, hiding drugs in these buildings, who are doing human trafficking in these buildings, and that is why this, this business of hijack buildings works for them because it's a, it's a no-go area for police, it's a no-go area for JMPD. So I am attributing what happened here today to illegal immigrants who have hijacked our buildings because this building was unsafe, the same as many other buildings that are around the city of Johannesburg. 73 people have died, 52 are in, are in hospitals being treated for injuries and inhalation of, of smoke. It's, 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 it's a tragedy. And I'm saying we are giving condolences to the families. But when I was the acting mayor, I exposed what these buildings are, and I was trying to be proactive and to stop this from happening. This from happening. MMC, thank you very much indeed. Uh, now the MMC for uh, transport, of course, but also the acting mayor of the city uh, for a, a short while. Kenny Kunene walking away off to another uh, briefing quickly. He was telling me they're going to have another council meeting now at 12 o'clock. I'm going to leave it there for now. So once again, two issues being brought to the fore. Well, not once again, I think for the first time, forgive me, that of property laws. And once again, and this is not the first time we're going to hear this, Tumza, as I come back to you, uh, it's the issue of illegal or undocumented foreigners being attributed, albeit unconfirmed, of course, to this incident behind us. I'll take it back to you for now. Thank you so much, uh, Gareth. And we'll continue delving into, uh, you know, all these, uh, you know, details that are coming up or in at least statements being made uh, by government officials, uh, law enforcement, uh, but also emergency services as we try to get to the bottom of what exactly was going on in the building, what led to this tragedy and what are the next steps to remedy this situation. But at the heart of this is the 73 lives we know at this point that have uh, been lost, amongst them being children, uh, more injuries uh, and that number, of course, uh, increasing, but also many others being displaced. And we'll try and get to the bottom of this as we give you this rolling coverage. Our reporter station on the ground, Hadi Jokos, Bafedile Mwerani, Gareth Edwards and Bu Lilitswiti-Jones.